Hello guys, my name's Chris and we're here at One Stop Grow Shop with Colleen from Grow Sentia, the creator of this new shiny product, Mammoth P. Mammoth P is a liquid organic microbial soil additive that acts as a catalyst to maximize plant nutrient use efficiency, to significantly increase plant phosphorus and micronutrient uptake, and it can significantly increase plant yield by at least 16%. I'm the co-founder of Grosentia. I'm also the chief growth officer, and I'm the inventor of this product, Mammoth Pete. I'm also a research scientist from Colorado State University. I have a PhD in soil microbiology, and my speciality or academic focus was on understanding plant microbe interactions. And while at the university, I published dozens of papers focused on understanding uh, how microbes facilitate plant health and growth and yield, not only in natural systems, but in agriculture systems. And we did this very well, our team at Colorado State University, for years and years. At one point, late in 2013, we started reflecting on the impact we were making as scientists and kind of reflecting on how well we were actually uh, achieving our goals of honestly helping farmers. We decided to focus on uh, microbial technologies that targeted phosphorus so we could maximize phosphorus uptake uh, for plant growth. We thought about this from a very different perspective than we thought anyone else would, was working on it and that was uh, basically treating microbes uh, as growers might treat plants through a plant trait selection platform. As growers look at traits in plants, uh, they want to focus and propagate traits to next generations, whether it be yield, quality, flavor, whatever the case. And those platforms, typically many replicates, even hundreds of replicates of plants can be grown and the plant that exhibits uh, those ideal traits are then propagated to subsequent generations. And we thought this was a really interesting way to think about selecting microbial communities. So what we ended up doing was targeting a trait for microbes, phosphorus cycling, and promoting that trait to train microbes at the community level to cycle phosphorus to a higher level like selective breeding for whichever one can take care of it most efficiently. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. It's just like selective breeding and it's very typical in horticulture mm. but yeah, it's not yeah, so typical yeah. in microbial ecology mm. or microbiology. We ended up pushing mm. the microbes uh, as far as we could but all biology has a roof. Yeah, yeah. And so what we did is we ended up pushing that the microbes uh, in that functional trait selection platform as far as we could until they actually leveled off. Right, okay, yeah. And so we kind of maxed them out, which is cool. That's exactly where you want oh, to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then at that point, uh, and only then, because we were really focused on function, we think function is most important when deploying microbial technologies into agriculture and in cultivation settings. Uh, did we look and see what microbes were actually facilitating that activity? And what we found was it was the microbes that uh, are now in Mammoth Peak. So I left the university in March 2015 to start our company, Grosentia. It was just me, and my job is really to scale commercialization and production to get a team on the ground and basically to get our first sales. And we had our first sale in Colorado in August 2015. That it was brilliant. amazing. <laughs> it, was, it was so victorious. And we were getting a lot of, we were starting to get a lot of traction, at least uh, email traffic mm -hmm. and inquiries. We got samples out uh, every day because we wanted growers to use the product and try it for themselves. We did get really good traction in our first 12 months in the market. From that first so sale, uh, we ended up getting about 39 more stores, about 40 stores uh, by the close of 2015. Fast forward 12 months to August 2016, and we were selling Mammoth P in over 30 states in over 300 grocery stores wow. across the country in the U.S. And that's with like zero advertising with budget. With zero <laughs> advertising budget. Two years in the market, that next August, 2017, we're now selling Mammoth P in almost 600 retail stores in over 40 states. Wow. And again, this is pretty tricky. We have to register our product with the Department of Agriculture, with every state, with every country. It's organically certified. So we went through OMRI certification for the U.S., 
it's quite it's difficult in America there. as well. The, they're it's a lot more strict on the other side of the pond. Yeah, yeah, yeah a yeah. lot more strict. We just finished our California organic certification, mm -hmm. and that took two years. Really? So it's really rigorous, and it takes a long time. Uh, saying that, it's well worth it. And growers across the country, literally thousands and thousands and thousands of growers are using the MMP and experiencing great results, which is awesome. It's what we wanted to accomplish. And so we're well on our way of making the impact that we wanted to make. We focused kind of on uh, mostly uh, hydroponic type mm -hmm. environments where we knew soil microbes didn't evolve in high ion, high fertilizer concentrations or in high water concentrations. And so we felt like any microbe that worked really well uh, for a hydroponic or any type of indoor cultivation management had to be able to persist well in those in those applications. I think that's where a lot of the manufacturers who make microbe-based things um, fall like strip over themselves when it comes to applying it in a hydro system because it is it's a big vat of water. Life just doesn't really want that's to, right. microbial life anyway. Your beneficial microbial life doesn't really want to exist in that kind of that's right that situation. Yep, and mm. so that's where our platform was actually, and it was it's it's pretty smart uh, how that works. You have to let give biology a chance. Mm. You can't immediately plug microbes from soil into a hydroponic environment and expect anything out of them because it's a shock. But as in our environmental trait selection platform, or our functional trait selection platform, it actually imposed an environmental selection as well where these microbes were able to adapt slowly right, over we'll time yeah. from one generation to the next in this environment that mimicked a hydroponic mm. environment. Which is cool. Yeah, yeah. And you know, again, we started off with over 10,000 species and that initial soil sample or that, combina that combination sample that we, we started with on our platform and we ended up with four species. There's a couple of reasons for that. One, we obviously selected the microbial communities that functioned at the highest level to propagate to the next generations. So the one that could cycle the phosphorus the most efficiently. The replicate, yeah. yeah so that, that, that represented a <clears throat> lot of different species. Uh, from generation one generation to the next but there's a lot of species that just died out and what I hypothesize is because they can't persist in a liquid environment for right. very long right. in okay, a high yeah. ion concentration so this platform that we have to select microbes does a really good job of actually weeding out microbes that aren't compatible for management although they might do really well in soils or in natural systems they're not going to be viable microbes to bottle uh, to provide solutions for growers. Oh, so selectively bred not only to cycle the phosphorus but also exist in water as well as cocoa. As exactly, well as exactly. You know, at the end of the day, that's what we came up with, but you still have to test it. Yeah, yeah. You know, we can say that we did all these amazing things in this platform in a lab, but, you know, that's stage one of developing technologies. Stage two is getting it out in the field and making sure it yeah. actually it delivers the results that you think it will. Yeah, yeah. And so, and that's where it was. It was really insightful to understand how it worked and how well it worked across all these different management practices. It's taking the world by storm. There's lots of people who are coming in and who are calling up the shop asking about it before we've even got it in. Do you think that that's riding sort of the tidal wave of all of the research that you did previously and all of the the gifts that you were giving out essentially? I think so, but at the end of the day, I think that we're uh, experiencing success mm. because growers are experiencing success. I mean, I didn't have an advertising budget and we don't really still have an advertising budget. And our goal is to bring value to growers. Mm. And I think the best way I can do that is to engage growers, let them try Mammoth, let them see the results from themselves. And what we always said is that if growers experience good results, They'll adopt a product. Oh yeah, we yeah. all know that. They'll adopt and then tell everyone about it. You get the friends yeah. on. You get the scans. And, and so that's a good point, yeah. and that's what we're seeing. I, mean, I think we have over thirty-two thousand Instagram followers, and, and you know over 27,000 Facebook followers. Mm. It's those people that are excited about using this product because they're seeing good results, and so that's cool. It's from nowhere, just dominoes upon dominoes effect. It's just blowing. It blows up. me yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's not me. That's not me. That's uh, that's people outside of us. That are making that excited happen. about it. Yeah. That's cool. impressive, that is. Really impressive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Um, it's quite highly concentrated. You can get quite a few people who are almost in disbelief when you say like this one litre bottle can make 6,057 litres. Yeah. Is there a reason why you went for a high concentration or...? Again, I'm a scientist. Mm. I thought it was cool. Yeah. I, I yeah. thought it was a get lot, it it was a lot better to have as, as, as yeah. highly concentrated as possible. And it makes a lot of sense if, if I can have a highly concentrated uh, microbial uh, product it lasts for as long as food. You know, it's more efficient, it's more scalable, and again, it all comes down to bringing value to growers. Mm. You know, I would rather growers buy one bottle and have it suit them for a long time. Uh, and one of the questions I get asked is, Colin, your product seems expensive, but after I look, and what they say then is after I look at the actual application rate, yeah, it turns out it's one of the cheapest products I'm using per application, yeah. per liter, because it's so concentrated. It's potentially one of the most impressive results as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. forget yeah. about the ROI, yeah, which yeah, is great yeah. that what the yield increases. And so mm. that's awesome, you know? And again, it makes me happy because by definition, I feel like that model brings more value to growers. Mm. And that was why I left the university. And, we, and I tell my team this every day, is like, our job is to bring value to growers, period. If we can do that, we're successful. Especially if, if it's something like a commercial grow where they've got like hundreds and hundreds of plants, a 1% increase means a vast increase, but something like a 16% increase, you'd almost be daft to at least not test it, never mind take it on board. That's right. And that's, yeah. you know, in, in the US, there's a lot of huge commercial grows mm. that are using mammoth feed. Mm. And it's because they are seeing that huge increase in quality and yield. And it's really hard as a business, just like a farm. It's a farm. This is agriculture. These are farmers. And if they see a huge increase in yield, that's what they're in the business of doing. Mm. Especially it's if it's not increasing cost. Yield. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. That's right.